We're back with more about eighth notes and ways of extending note values in fractional values. Now, <clears throat> there are two ways to extend the value of a note in a manner that, leading to a note that's longer than the um, note values that we have already established. Uh, one way is with a dot and one way is with a tie. This is a tie which adds the value of this eighth note to this eighth note. Now I just wanted to show you the, um, the, the value of the tie because it can clarify the, um, the rhythmic structure of the measure. Right here the tie is it covers the middle of the measure. You have a half note on this side and a half note on this side. If, <clears throat> if you don't use the tie you might get something confusing like this rhythm at the bottom. Um, once again, in order to read a rhythm that's confusing, refer back to the uh, count, which is always the same. Uh, one and two and three and four and, when you're in four four time. <clears throat> and then figure out where the beats are. This is the first beat in this measure. It lines up with the one. A quarter note covers the one and the and. <clears throat> This is the second beat, because we're out of time on the first beat. And it covers the two and the and of two. This then has to be the first beat, uh, the first note of the third beat. It lines up with the three. This note falls on the and of three, and it covers the four. And then this note falls on the and of four. Now, like I've said before, when you have a guitar or you have a foot to tap, you have an automatic calculator of uh, difficult rhythms like this. Now when I play the rhythms and count them off, you'll see that they're not as difficult as they look. And I'm not going to get too deep into the business of ties and um, <clears throat> dots because it could lead to uh, at least an hour's worth of talk. Instead, we'll deal with them when they come up in the musical examples. I'm as anxious as you are to get on to the musical examples and the dialogue games. But I, I felt, for the sake of completeness, it was necessary to describe the ties and the dots. Um, okay, when we look at the bottom measure, we can see the same, we can break it down the same way as the top measure. This has to be the, this is the first note in the measure, and it belongs on one. Uh, this is the second note in the measure. This one is an eighth note, so it, the next note begins on the and of one. This is an eighth note, this is an eighth note here. But it's a quarter note, so it covers two eighth notes. That means it's and two. And two is in the middle of this note and that note. Now I'll show you, I'll, I'll draw out the count for this so you can understand it, but my main point about this lower measure is you can't see the middle of the measure. So for clarity's sake, you need to rewrite it with a tie across the middle of the measure. <clears throat> Let's do that right now. Well, first of all, we have this, and then this covers the middle of the measure because this covers the and of two and three. And this, this right here, let's draw an imaginary line. You don't see this in written music, but reading, reading rhythm becomes a lot easier when you can visualize the center of the uh, measure. So we have a problem right here. Here's how to solve the problem. You make this an eighth note. And now we have a, a familiar, this is a familiar rhythmic structure. This is also, this is one. This is the and of one. Silent two, which you can just say mm for. And this is the um, this is the end of two. And now we need something to happen on three. Well, this is the end of three, so what do we do? Okay, we add an extra eighth note right here, and you'll see this frequently in written music, like this. We still need that quarter note right here, and then we tie this note to that note. Now, with these two eighth notes tied together, they add up to, sorry, the um, pen isn't working very well, 
uh, they add up to a quarter note. So remember there was a quarter note here, I changed it to an eighth note, but now I've restored the quarter note and you can see the middle of the measure. So let's continue with the count. This is three, but nothing happens on three, so I put a paran around it. And now, this is the end of three, and this is four, but nothing happens on four, other than the, the note you just played continues through the fourth beat. And this is the end of four. So let's count this measure off now. One and mm and mm and mm and. One and 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 and. Once you get used to hearing mm, it's pretty easy to drop mm entirely. Now if you understand how to do this, it's the key to reading um, complicated rhythms quickly. Locate the beats, then figure out what's happening on each beat. Uh, I'm going to pick up my guitar now and play both of these rhythms. Back with my guitar and ready to read the top rhythm. Now, when I see a tie like this, if I can't immediately understand what it's doing, I just like to pretend it's not there. And then it usually becomes pretty easy to read the rhythm without the tie. Then, after I understand how the rhythm ought to go with that, um, without the tie, I put it back in and it becomes pretty easy to imagine that the note that you were playing a moment ago has disappeared. And that's what happens when there's a tie. So the count is in this top measure is going to be one, two and, three and, four and. <clears throat> there's an m on the four, and there's an m on the three, but I'm going to pretend that the three is, is there, the tie isn't. Okay, so now rhythm one becomes fairly easy to read. I'm going to use a muted strings. One, two, and, three, and, four, and. Notice that the right hand keeps moving down and up. And I simply go into the strings when there's a sound. There's a sound on the first beat, so one. There's a sound on the two and the and uh, on the second beat, so two and. Then uh, my hand has to keep going. So do I do something here? Well, according, because there's a tie, I skip the strings. So skip. And then my hand comes up on the strings on this um, quarter note because it's on the and of three. So nothing happens on the four. So my hand skips the strings and then comes up on the strings for the and of four. Now with the tie. The tie is going to wipe out beat number three. One, two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, we're done with uh, rhythm one. Let's go to rhythm two. Here we have a count of one, and, mm, and, mm, and, mm, and. Okay, we have a tie right here. That'll make it easy. I'll wipe out the tie, and then I'll put it back in again for reading the rhythm uh, for... Uh, final reading of the rhythm. One and skip and three and four and. I can, if I'm playing guitar, I can just say skip for each of these counts now and make sure that my, my hand misses the strings. One and skip and skip and skip and. I'll speed that up a little bit, make it a little more um, lively. One and skip and skip and skip and. Okay, uh, rhythms in the book do not get much more difficult than this. I'll be back in a moment to um, talk about the dotted note.